how much does van life cost? Today we're gonna sit down and have a dialogue about how much van life costs for us, whether it's more expensive than living in a house or not, and a variety of topics. So let's get started. I'm Chico. No, you're Chico. <laughs> I'm Chico and this is Moritz. And we built this box truck to travel North America and climb some rocks, hence the name Road to Pitches. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Alrighty everybody, how are you doing today? I'm doing hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot inside this box truck right now. It's like 35 degrees Celsius, we got a light on. There's not much air moving because we had to turn off the fan to film, so it's gonna be a little sweaty. I'm gonna start by saying that this video was a little tough to make, and it was tough to make because even though I'm a CPA, in my past life I was an auditor and an accountant, so you can trust our numbers, but I was very much traumatized by that whole profession, spending the bulk of my adult years in there. Don't mention dollar signs to her. <laughs> <laughs> I hate looking at finances, and we realized why recently. Yeah, it kind of gives your whole mortality a number. Like all these hours that you put into work are converted into these money numbers, and then you see, oh yeah, I've spent that and that much of my life generating these numbers and then if I spent the money I'm gonna basically take all that and that much of my life through these numbers so I think that's what made us feel a little, little uncomfortable yeah it really does just like quantify this finite thing that you have on this planet called time time is finite and that's why we chose van life because we wanted to spend our time doing awesome things on this planet so to make this video a little bit more interesting, we're gonna scatter some quiz questions throughout because as you all know, Moritz loves to be right, which means that many of you probably also like to be right. So we're gonna disclaim this whole video by saying that we are not responsible for any marital brawls that happen if you debate any of our answers, okay? So the first question that we have is how much did we spend in the most expensive month of van life. Did we spend 900 US dollars, 1900 US dollars, 2900 US dollars, or 3900 US dollars? If you followed us, we did have quite some repairs on this truck. Some alternator breakdown, we had an axle leaking. Also, Moritz does not know what the answer is. So I would say probably the 2900 because we that. did have a big repair bill and we drove quite a bit in one month. Okay, 2900 is <laughs> <laughs> Our most expensive month, we spent 3900 US dollars. When 39. was that? That was in November when we repaired the alternator, when we had to fix our parking brakes and discovered the axle transmission was leaking or whatever. And then we also entered the United States. Oh, I guess we had a ferry ticket then and, and we drove a lot. Ferry wow. ticket was hell expensive. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bless you. <That's... laughs> so following that, our second question is, how would you rank the following expenses in order from most expensive to least expensive? This is pertaining to what you've seen on our channel and it, it, it correlates with other van lifers as well. So the three categories are groceries and dining, fuel consumption, and phone and internet plans. We ate a lot, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Did we eat a lot? Yes. I think that's my number one. That's your number one? Uh-huh. Okay. Then fuel and then phone. Phone is really expensive, but it can't be as expensive as fuel. Okay. Food, fuel, phone. Okay. What are your answers? So the answer is what Moritz said. Food, fuel, phone. Wow, they all start with f. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
when the rainy months hit in the Pacific Northwest, eating, <laughs> obviously we were stress eating like crazy, <laughs> but also going to restaurants was just like a reprieve from the rain. Like, could you mm -hmm. remember, oh God, the drumming on the box? Yeah, it was a lot. Like even I got it denied us eventually. <laughs> It was, it was nuts. The second one is fuel consumption. Yeah, I actually tracked our fuel consumption over the whole trip with a little app in our truck. Called? Called Fuelio. Fuelio? Fuelio. Mm -hmm. And so far we have driven 20,000 kilometers. Our actual consumption is... 23.4 liters. What? So it is way higher than I was anticipating. With our worst consumption, that was when we were going through the city and I think through mountain. Which way? 30.3 <laughs> liter per hundred. <laughs> no. However, we also had a really good day where we only, or not day, like a, it's always calculating over the fuel tank. So we drove a whole tank with 20 liter per hundred kilometer. In total, we have consumed about 4,800 liters of fuel. Just quite a number. That is a lot. Uh -huh. And how much have we paid? And our total fuel cost is $6,460 wow. Canadian. That number is going to vary depending on your vehicle. If you're watching this, doing your own research on how much van life would cost for you. Comparing our box truck to our friend's Ram Promaster 2500, for example, we use 1.6 times more fuel than they do over the same stretch of driving. So just keep that one in mind as you're doing your own planning and research of the long-term impact of what your vehicle will have on your budget. So the third one is phone and internet. In Canada, our plans are absolute garbage. We pay so much money for nothing. So just our base plans themselves are like 80 dollars mm -hmm, yeah. per phone line which gives us 50 gigs which is a lot and the reason why we need so much data is because well we gotta stay online hang out with all of you and do our youtube videos but if you didn't need that much data i imagine it'd be quite a bit lower yeah i wish it was europe where you get unlimited for 20 euros 20 euros or something like that it's nuts and you can use it um, the entire eu so. mm -hmm. yeah all right so the three biggest categories are food fuel and phone for us your third biggest category might be campground might be your activities so that one's going to vary quite a bit depending on your scenario one of the things we do to offset our van life costs is of course run this channel row two pitches and when we were a baby channel we made no money from it but as you continue to watch and enjoy our content and we grew in size we got noticed by sponsors and so we get a little bit of money every month when we make videos with sponsorship it yeah, as you noticed, we never really advertise any stuff that we don't like ourselves. We've actually turned down quite some sponsorship, like mattresses, e-bikes, I don't know. I don't want all this crap. I want stuff that I use daily. It's some of stuff. it is good stuff, some of it is crappy. Like that Chinese e-bike, I don't want it. Are you allowed to say that on uh, YouTube? Yes, why not? <laughs> I don't want a ch crappy Chinese e-bike where I have to worry that the frame breaks when I go over a bump. Like, <laughs> no. Please don't give me crappy e-bikes. <laughs> <laughs> this sponsor that we are up for now, we actually use it on a daily basis to learn Spanish and... Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about budgeting on Skillshare. Don't click away because when we come back we're going to show you the full breakdown of our expenses. If creating budgets overwhelms you, then this is the Skillshare class you'll want to join. In only 16 minutes, you'll learn how to budget in Sun Han's personal budgeting made easy class. I watched his entire class, so folks, I can promise you that this is the Skillshare class that will get you started on budgeting for van life. Skillshare is always launching new classes, so there's always something new to discover. We stumbled across this fun Skillshare shorts class called Designer in a Van on tour with Aaron Draplin and it was so inspiring to watch. The first 1,000 people to use our link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Join Skillshare and learn with us today. 
Okay, so here's our full breakdown of our cost of living expenses for two people averaged over several months in Canada and the US. So accommodations would cost you around 180 if you choose to live like us and sometimes go into campgrounds to get water or to dump your gray tank or go spend some time at an Airbnb relaxing, uh, having running water, running hot water. The next expense is camper and that's just like upgrades that we've needed along the way like a like a wi-fi booster um what else have we well, purchased we replaced some walls for mold uh, replacing the, wall. the skylight cooking gas and the next expense is 30 bucks for entertainment that's mostly me buying video games <laughs> on my phone right now i'm playing the way home Let's not talk about it. <laughs> the next expense, the highest one, is food and dining at $710 for the both of us. It includes groceries, alcohol, and restaurants. Gifts and donations at $70. Um, insurance for this van is actually pretty reasonable. It's around $80 a month, and that's because it's registered as a motorhome, and motorhomes don't tend to cost that much in, uh, in insurance in Ontario, in Canada. So. Always make sure to, yeah, just make sure your, your van is classified correctly, that it's a passenger vehicle or a private vehicle, not a commercial vehicle, motorhome classification. Check out our video on that. Mm -hmm. We've also got a video on that, so we'll link it down in the description below. So for cell phones, we pay $330, and it's because we've been using our Canadian line in the US, which basically means we're paying for like four phones. The next line is personal care and most pertinent to van life is laundry and showers. So laundry for us costs about like 15 bucks, 10 to 15 bucks a month. And then the other amount is when we have to go to rec centers to take showers when we can't shower inside the van. Um, your personal care budget is going to look very different. Contact lenses, eye care, all those kinds of things are going to be different for each person. Um, so yeah, we haven't really had to get many toiletries because no. we're dirtbags. <laughs> well, the next line is shopping, discretionary stuff, but also, I mean, obviously you saw the junk that we, <laughs> that we bought while we were on the road, but also um, like hiking poles. Mm -hmm. um, I bought new hiking shoes. I realized I hadn't replaced them in like six years. And so that brings us to a rounded average of about 2,500 US dollars per month. For two people though. For two people, which is pretty good, all things considered, right? Yeah. I think. My advice to you, my CPA approved <laughs> advice to you, <laughs> so fabulous, eh? Is to just track your expenses for many months, at least three months, and then use that to extrapolate out. It's very unlikely that your cost of living will change if you stay within Canada and the US relative to your home base, if your home base is in Canada or the US. How does van life compare to house life? Are we going to save money? Well, I would think that we did, did do save money because you're living so much smaller. But after seeing our fuel bill, I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> curious now what your numbers are pointing towards yeah so the next question for y'all is true or false van life saves you money gotta save you money <laughs> where it says true i know the answer so i'm not gonna say anything all right i think what's more interesting is noticing what your initial reaction was like did you say yes of course it saves you money then maybe you have a bias that van life is cheap or maybe you're like, y'all bougie, living this lifestyle, eating all this food. So no, it didn't save you money because you're living so luxuriously camping. <laughs> the answer is, of course, it depends. But for us, we're not saving that money. Not to buy a long shot, we are not. I'm actually very embarrassed. I was so shocked when I did the, ran, ran the numbers. So what's the number? Our cost of living before van life, including rent, average, 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 twenty-four hundred U.S. dollars per month, which is pretty good living in Toronto. We paid really little in rent, yeah. although 
We lived small. Mm -hmm. We lived very small. If you saw one of our moving out videos, the ceiling was super duper low. Moritz hit his head. I hit my head all the time. <laughs> and right now, van life is looking more like closer to 2,600 US per month. So we're spending about $200 more per month. But we're actually traveling every month. Do you travel every month? <laughs> your regular life. <laughs> Do you travel every month in your regular life? He says. <laughs> True. So, one thing that I will emphasize is when you look at van life, if you're using it as a vehicle to save money on your lifestyle, maybe look again because you want to ask yourself is the amount of money that you will save, is that going to be a worthwhile trade off? for a decrease in your quality of life. Potential decrease. And you're gonna wanna look at the whole picture and make sure you have a net positive. For us, van life has been a net positive because we had specific goals in mind of seeing places, rock climbing, traveling, making content for y'all, and this lifestyle gave us all of that. Now, one question that I always have for other van lifers and that we've been asked quite regularly is how do we fund van life? And frankly, right now, we are funding the majority of our life through our savings. So we tried our very best to be net positive this year in finances, but even when you start a new business, it takes some time for it to ramp up. And we have some projects on the side that are bringing in a little bit of money, but we've decided to stay work-free for this month and coming months just to finally get to like chill out. <laughs> yeah, what do you have to say about that, Morris? What about what about the guy that commented, look at all these youngins right now thinking that they retire early or something along those lines? What do you think? Well, I think this whole promise of retirement, it's not holding up anymore and these age and date like day and back age. Day and age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back in the day you would do your nine to five for 40 years and then you turn 75 and you retire and you get a nice paycheck 65 65 mm -hmm. what did i say 75 oh well nowadays it's 75 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now it's 75 yeah you get a nice paycheck from whomever and you live life but yeah these days you work your ass off you pay into a system, at least in Germany, where you're never ever gonna see anything back. And yeah, you're likely gonna work way beyond 65. Like in Germany, it's already 67 by law, but mm -hmm. it's very hard to meet that 67 if you don't start early enough, which is hard because your education takes so long, which takes so long because you have to learn so much. Mm -hmm. I'm rambling here. You are. So. <laughs> So we recommend intermittent retirement, you know, like every decade, take half a year, a year off, just to like recenter yourself, see if you're still heading in the right direction. And we intend on doing this throughout the rest of our lives, just taking a full year off every like eight to 10 years or so, just to see if, yeah, we're going in the right direction in our lives still. We're not the only people that resonate with this. A lot of people that we've met on the road also are living off of their savings and we're all trying to figure out ways to add more value into the world, not going about the conventional lifestyle. There is a silver lining to all of this ridiculous amount of spending that we've been doing. All of the fixes that we've done on the van hopefully will last us for at least a year or two, if not more. So those expenses are said and done. Now we are in Mexico and in Mexico, it's quite cheap here. It's quite cheap here. So the next question I have for you is how much does living in Mexico cost? 900 US dollars, 1900 US dollars, 2900 US dollars, 3900 US dollars. So you'll know one of those answers is already not correct because it's the same options from the previous question. 19? 1900? But we are not driving, so maybe it's even the answer A. You gotta pick one. I'll pick A. <laughs> <laughs> Final answer. Final answer, 900. 900 US dollars. Uh -huh. Ding, 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 ding. What sound is. What, what hand gesture? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so we're only spending 900 US dollars here, which is so crazy. Like, the food costs next to nothing, Tom. 
pesos or like 13 pesos here which is so good <laughs> and we turn off our phone plans for the month like the roaming parts um we're not driving anywhere well we do pay rent here but we pay rent here 400 but it's like a month. 400 us dollars a month which is really good and yeah food's been great groceries been great we, we rock climb which costs like nothing no <laughs> so yeah that's the silver lining. It's really, really helping offset those crazy months we just had. We can't recommend Mexico enough as a destination if you're thinking about van life. Getting here was super easy. Going to Baja is even easier. It's just so affordable. The people are so great. The van life here is pretty awesome. So highly recommend Mexico. No, make sure you don't drive in sketchy places, but otherwise- Drive at night, don't drive at night. Don't drive at night. Yeah. Otherwise, no issues here at all. At least where we've been. And well, then you can look at YouTube for well, other people's We adventures. have all our friends that have been traveling from Baja and that will be coming over here. And they meant, didn't mention anything. Like, uh, mm -hmm. So stay, stay smart and you'll stay safe. What are your final words? Final words? If you think about doing it and you think you can financially handle it, do it. Do it. Do it right now. I don't know where the accent came from. <laughs> Well, I guess to sum everything up, van life looks really different for every couple, every person, depending on your travel scenario. Obviously, the most expensive thing is going to be gas. You cannot change that. If you have a travel plan and your fuel consumption is X, can't change that. Whereas everything else you can kind of play around with. You can eat cheaper food, not go out dining as much, cut back on your phone plan, for example. But if you invested in a vehicle and that's just how much gas your vehicle is gonna chug then you kind of don't have a choice there so that's probably like one of the most critical factors when deciding on van life and the van you're gonna buy and also just to note that like when you have crappy months the expenses are additive when you are not able to do anything and you want to go to the restaurants and you have to fix stuff and because you're fixing things you're tired so you don't want to cook so you go out and buy food <laughs> like it's all additive it's just like this is just life lesson for for yeah. any lifestyle not just van life um just being kind to yourself in those moments and then finally going to mexico to offset everything that about sums it all up right mm -hmm. okay I think so and I guess to make this relevant for the release of this video with the fuel prices skyrocketing, really take that into consideration. We assumed that we were going to be driving 22,000 kilometers max. Right now, we're probably going to drive closer to 30,000. And throughout our entire journey from build till now, our margin of error what do you call it margin of error no i think so or like our yeah our margin of error was 50 percent. so anything you calculate add 50 percent on top of it <laughs> <laughs> then you're in the safe spot <laughs> then you're gonna be then you're gonna feel good about yourself at the end of the day not like how we feel about ourselves right now so that about wraps up this video yeah thank you so much for watching i hope there were some useful bits of information in here that you can take away it's getting really hot in here but before we go all of this content takes time and effort and a sweat, as you can see, to go into it. And if you thought this was a helpful video, then please take a moment to buy us a coffee over at coffee.com, K-O-F-I.com, and we'll put the link down below. Otherwise, just dump us a thumbs up. A thumbs up is also great. <laughs> Leave us a comment below, send some hearts, and yeah. We've also got other videos, um, more fun things like vlogging, um, our climbs, and our adventures in Mexico. So make sure you check those out as well. All right. Okay. See you on the road to pitches. See you on the road to pitches. <sighs> so. <laughs> <laughs>